Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Spearhead Sundays. Check out the new chin. What do we think? Do we like it? Is it nice? Is it everything you expected? Yes. The, Keelan likes it. Great. A hundred percent satisfaction guarantee. I feel good. Um, I'm happy with it. I think it looks good. I think that um, I don't look too. I don't look like, like a different person, which I was really worried about. Um, I think that uh, it's it's just made me like a, a a handsomer version of myself. Yeah. Um, but I've never I've never had a chin before. What's this? What is that? A chin. Normally, what would happen is I would go from I would go nose, top lip, bottom lip, neck. But now there's a chin in the way, which is interesting. Um, I'm feeling good. I, uh, I'm i still kind of recovering from it. So I don't know how long this is going to be. And also I'm a little bit lispy because my bottom lip is so numb. Can't feel it. You know, my my, my girl was, uh, was touching it uh, to see. I had my eyes closed and she's touching my bottom lip. And I'm going, oh, I feel that. I feel that. And she's going, can you feel this? I'm like, what? And she goes, I'm pinching you really hard. <laughs> I'm like, I, I guess not. Um, but yeah, I'm back. Uh, did you know? Have you noticed? Because uh, we had coffee this morning. Have you noticed? Uh, did you see the people staring at me? No. The ones that that followed us out. No, I didn't. What you didn't they? notice them? No. All those women that were following us <laughs> from the cafe all the way to your car, and then when you drove off, they started running. <laughs> Just like every woman in the cafe. did You, you didn't notice that? I didn't notice. It's been happening to me a lot. <laughs> like ever since my swelling went down everywhere I go, because um, I'm, you know, I'm used to people looking at me because, you know, I've, I've got a, a couple videos that have gone well. So, and, and also I'm really tall. So people kind of look at me anyway. Um, but what, what is new is um, I haven't left the house too much, but yeah, man, every place I go, women just kind of look at me and then, and then, like I was in the bookshop the other day, and I was in I was in the horror aisle looking at horror books, and then there was uh, a woman who was also there looking at books. And then I went into the history section, and I'm looking at a book. I looked to my left, and she's in the history section. And there were two other women in the history section. And I thought, well, this is getting crowded. I moved over to the biography section. Next thing I know, there's six women and me in the biography section. <laughs> And uh, it just kept going like that in the store until I, I was like, this book, this bookstore is too, too packed. I went to the cafe. They all came with. And, and it, it's just like I've noticed like women staring and following me um, and, you know, they're blushing and getting really red faces. I don't know why. <laughs> it must be a side effect of having the, the best chin on earth crafted by science. My auntie saw you at the bookstore the other day. Oh, really? She told me That's who it, it was. <laughs> yeah. I thought she looked familiar. What'd she say? She just said that she, she saw a really tall guy and mm -hmm. was like, oh, my God, that's Lewis. And she yeah. always talks about you. And she a was anything, too nervous. To anything about my, my face? or I think she said you were really handsome. Oh, <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. She probably got home and drew a picture of me, stuck it on her, her mirror. Um, I heard she divorced her husband. I, many people are saying this. <laughs> uh, so, so I just wanted to say that um, I'm I'm setting up like a lot of mattresses and tents in the backyard. It's starting to look like a bit of a refugee camp. Everyone's girlfriend's coming over. Mothers, grandmothers. We're kind of arranging it by age. There is there is a strict cutoff. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. I feel good, man. I I think I'm cured. Like I've been I've been sleeping uh, all through the night. I've been having dreams. That's good. Actual dreams because before the closest thing I would get to a dream would be um, as I was waking up from asphyxiation, I would have a terror and an adrenaline surge, and I and I would go, someone's trying to kill me. Um, but that was that was just me dying in my sleep <laughs> uh, and almost and, and narrowly avoiding an aneurysm. But now I have I have dreams like I was on the bus the other day and I didn't know where I was going. A normal dream. <laughs> how crazy is that? Here's, a, here's how I know that you're you're healed or cured. Mm -hmm. This morning I got to your house about 15 minutes earlier than expected. It only took me 10 minutes to drive here. Yeah. And I texted you. I said, I'm at the front. And within two minutes you were there. That is, that is astonishing for me, isn't it? And it was, it was half, it was 45 minutes earlier than we originally decided to meet. Yeah. See, because what would, what, what would normally happen? Is I'd rock up at the time that we decided. Yeah. It would, two, two things. One thing would be five minutes before I'm about to leave, you text me and go, can we do it in half an hour? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Because I'd wake up and I go, Ugh, I have to see Keelan. I thought it was Monday. <laughs> well, the second option would be I rock up, I pull out the front of your house waiting to pick you up, and it's five, ten minutes at least to wait. Yeah, which is fine. Because I would go, <laughs> I thought I could sleep for another 10 minutes. Oh, fuck. Keelan wasn't late. How <laughs> inconsiderate. Yeah, I've, I've, no, I've been noticing. You know what You know what I've noticed it, ever since? Because uh, there was obviously a really rough period of recovery, which I'll get into. But since that's kind of ended, like I don't have any pain and I'm not exhausted from healing anymore. But I'm just noticing uh, in so many different ways how sick I was and I didn't even realise. Mm. Like just the, you know, like waking up and I don't feel like awful uh, is like the main one. But, yeah, things like uh, when, when I go, oh, yeah, let's meet at 9, I'm I'm up at 7. Yeah. <laughs> just accidentally, you yeah, know. I was texting you this morning an hour mm. before we met. Yeah, and I was up an hour before that. <laughs> <laughs> so now, so uh, Keelan, I, was, I got me onto the same sleeping app that he uses and I'm trashing you in in the yeah. scores the sleep yeah. scores I'm now sleeping better than Keelan which I which isn't well. impressive but for me feels like an achievement you know that's like a Paralympian just beat a normal guy in a race <laughs> that's awesome you know it's like for anyone else it's not that great but for the for the guy who has one leg it's pretty cool <laughs> you know and and I'm saying that as a guy who has trashed a Paralympian in a swimming race um, <laughs> I'm gonna be. I'm gonna miss it. Two blokes with sleeping disorders. Yeah. Now it's just one bloke. Yeah. Now, well, look. Now this is how the podcast is gonna get better. I'm gonna come to the show refreshed. I'm gonna tell you all about a dream that I had, yeah. and then I'm gonna go. This is gonna be. This is gonna be the craziest bit. I'm gonna go. All right, guys. I'll talk to you next Sunday, and you know what'll happen? There'll be an episode. <laughs> That's. That, now, I don't want to make any big promises, any, anything too unrealistic. I know a lot of people are shaking their heads, but, you know, I'm all better. I've got my new chin, and, and with, with chins come uh, accountability. Um, so, yeah, I am, I am a lot less – it's not all positives to, to this. There are some negatives that I've noticed. I'm much less aerodynamic. <laughs> Because before, my face was shaped like a shark's fin. You know, it was like nose, forehead, and neck. And that's kind of it. The nose would pierce the air and, and I would I would kind of breeze through it, uh, you know, much more smoothly, which was good. Now, I am noticing a lot more wind resistance when I walk forward because I've got such a square Chad head. <laughs> which isn't, you know, it's like I, I, I'm not planning on... Um, I don't really need to be aerodynamic. Like I'm not planning on like hang gliding anytime. I'm not in Hamas or anything. So it's not too much of a problem. But when I swim, I assume there'll be slightly more drag. And as someone who has like Olympic um, oh. aspirations and goals. Well, the Olympics are next year and we're, we're going to be. I'll be ready. Yeah. 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 We'll be, we'll be, we'll be there competing. We'll see. <laughs> Where are the Olympics next year? Where are they happening? Paris. Paris. Boo. Fuck that. I'll just go to the Commonwealth Games. Oh, wait. He cancelled them and then quit. I like that. That's good. <laughs> I think that's really good. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a leaf out of Dan Andrews' book. Is uh, is What I'm going to do is I'm going to organise a really big project and, I'm gonna, and um, I'll crowdfund it so it'll be your money. Uh, and, and I'll spend all of it uh, and then I'll go, actually, never mind. Also, I quit. <laughs> uh, um, no refunds. See, that's something that you don't get as a taxpayer is a refund if, from when services aren't rendered. <laughs> um, but, you know, I went, to, I went to a Cursor show. That was my first outing mm. um, when, when, uh, when I started to feel better. It was just a coincidence. I was, like, just well enough to go and because I know him, he let me come backstage because there's no fucking way, even now, I would stand in the crowd of a cursor show with my glass jaw. Because, you know, it looks strong, but, but the structural integrity of this thing is, is not good. It's, it's, if I fall over, I'm, I'm going to need another surgery. Like, it, I'll, I'll come out another shape. So I'm not up to being bumped at a, at a cursor show for being too tall and getting in the fucking way, bruh. <laughs> Give me your shoes. Uh, but I went there and uh, the the opening act, right, was amazing. Um, but because it's a, a an Oz rap show, so like, for example, comedy, the opening act will generally try and warm the crowd up 
get them laughing, get them clapping, get them vocal so they're in the mood to like laugh and to make noise, which is what we love. Uh, and then the main act comes on. Oz rap's a little bit different. Uh, what happened at this show is 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 the the opening act got on. They did one song for about two minutes, and then they did three minutes of um, of fuck Dan Andrews chants, <laughs> <laughs> which which I thought was great. I thought, oh, what's going to happen next? Is is uh, is the next opening act going to come out and be like, guys, vote no, we're against a vision, uh, which didn't happen. Um, but you know, maybe at the next one. It was an amazing show though, really good. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm. I'm feeling a lot better, but recovery was tough. However, the first five days were fun mm. because here's the thing about surgery is uh, you get Oxycontin. Now, I've never done drugs in my life, and I've also never had a full drink of alcohol. I've never smoked weed, not even cigarettes. I'm like, I haven't touched any of this stuff. The only drug I've ever done is, is scientific-grade doctor-prescribed heroin, Oxycontin is the only drug I've ever I've ever tried, which is a pretty wild start, you know. Talk about a gateway drug. I don't know what's let next. Fucking just to feel a buzz, I'll have to go over to, to Ukraine and try crocodile. You know that one that makes your leg fall off? All those Vice documentaries were like, look at this guy's leg. Why isn't Vice like that anymore? Why isn't Vice why are they trying to be a news organization? I miss when Vice was like, look at this homeless guy's leg. It's falling off. <laughs> and it's like 30 minutes of, oh, this woman's face is falling off her head. Let's talk to her about it and not pay her. Why, not, why can't they go back to that? Instead, I got to watch, oh, here's a, a 40 minute moving story about drag queen story hour. I don't care. I want to see like the prettiest female reporter you've ever seen in a war zone. She definitely shouldn't be. You know, hanging around with some drug dealer who's definitely killed a lot of people going, check out my sound system. Why isn't Vice like that anymore? Instead, they've been purchased by the Saudis. Well, maybe they'll go back to that stuff now. <laughs> you know, Vice will be like, actually, it's really cool to kill journalists, especially if they diss your boss, man. Um, what was I saying? Oxycontin. So I was, I was on that and... Uh, Honest review, you know, all jokes aside, it's really kind of boring unless you force yourself to stay awake and then things happen. Uh, for some reason, whenever I would only ever have like a spoonful of it when the pain got bad just to kind of help me sleep. And normally I would just fall asleep straight away. But as I started, because the first surgery I had, I would have the oxy and I'd be out and then I wouldn't remember anything and nothing would happen. I would just be out. The second one, this one, because I was sleeping better, I didn't, I wasn't so exhausted. So I'd have some oxy, and then I would have about thirty minutes of free time before, <laughs> before my designated ten-hour coma. Uh, and uh, every time I woke up, it was like a mystery of like, what message did I send? Because mm. it's not like you know those those fun dentist videos where people. They go to the dentist and they leave and they're all fucked up and they can speak. I couldn't speak. My my mouth was held shut with rubber bands. I was all swollen. I couldn't speak. The only thing I could do is is text people that that I don't know and know well enough to be texting the things that I was texting them. That's it, you know. And every single person that I texted, which by the way, at my last count was about thirty people. I was texting just the emoji. Of the abacus. <laughs> That's right. Which I, upon reflection, I don't remember this at all, but you and I had several chats <laughs> about the abacus emoji. <laughs> and, and, and I had the same conversation with like, for real, 30 people. And every conversation went something like this. I would send them the abacus emoji like six times in a row, nothing else. They would go, Hey man, <laughs> like I don't know them that well. Hey man, what's up? And I would go, why do they have an abacus emoji, but they don't have a calculator emoji? Which is a good question, <laughs> but a strange thing for a guy that you don't really know, haven't spoken to in like, I don't know, three years, some of these people, to be texting you about emojis at like fucking 2 p.m. on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, and I went back and forth with you for ages. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and in fact... You just started baiting me. 
<laughs> a few, a few people, because I would also post on my close friends on Instagram. Yes, I was, sorry. I was smart enough to not post online publicly during this time, but I did post frequently on the close friend story. And whenever I started posting on the close friend story, I would eventually have a few people just messaging me confusing shit on purpose. <laughs> uh, and it distressed me to the point where Jazz took my phone. <laughs> So uh, thank you to everyone who tried to fucking psychologically break me while I was on heroin. Um, but, you know, it gave me something to do. I'm so sick. You know I haven't eaten so solid food yet? Still. No, I, I actually, a couple of days ago, I just started having really soft overcooked pasta, which is huge. That's like day 55 after, after surgery that I'm cleared to eat food. You can't even chew it. You just have to swallow it. Yeah, so I've I, I I just I can't you know I can kind of like touch it with my teeth and I go oh that hurts I reckon I'll just try you know I'm like me eating my eating breakfast lunch and dinner is like a dog that hasn't been fed in three days you know it's just straight in the mouth and swallowing no chewing real Riley Reid shit um, <laughs> uh, but it is it is it is getting better uh, as you can tell I'm speaking. Um, I'm a little bit lispy, but th I think that's only because I can't feel where my bottom lip is. The feeling is coming back. It's mostly on the inside of my lip that I don't have feeling. Um, and and the, the reason that is, the, the surgeon told me, you got nerves that go all the way down your body, but they come all the way up your neck and actually sit in your chin. And they're really important. They're, they're how you feel. So the doctor has to like grab them and move them out of the way and then put them back and then it heals. And then the nerves go, where the fuck am I? What am I feeling? And some some people just don't ever get their feeling back. Surgeon, I had a meeting with him yesterday. He said, if you, if you have some feeling now, you should get all of it back. It's a really good sign, um, which is similar to what happened after the first one. I had like really weird sensation in my top lip and it came back really slowly, but it's fully back now. So I am hopeful. But yeah, when I was watching like recovery videos of of other guys talking about it. This guy was like, oh, okay, jaw surgery update, four years on, still can't feel my bottom lip. <laughs> Don't have much taste left. I was like, fuck, revoke that guy's license. Um, but it's good. I can breathe. Um, Jazz sent me a video. She recorded me while I was asleep. And you guys have heard the previous one in, in the first video that I made about before the first surgery, that horrible video of me just like choking to death. This one she sent me, you couldn't hear anything. There was no noise. You could just hear me exhaling. Couldn't hear me inhaling because it was quiet. Inhale into the mic. Oh, through your nose. That's the weirdest thing. My nose works a lot more. It's still fucked. Like the left one still doesn't work, but he didn't touch the nose at all. The nose has completely changed yeah. shape. It used to point downwards. Now it points forwards and it's a lot straighter. It's like I've had a full nose job. He didn't touch it at all. But because all of the bone underneath the nose gets moved forward, it opens it up a little bit. So that's the that's kind of the... the other than the women following me everywhere, that's the strangest side effect. You know, for a side effect, like for a life-changing surgery, I was thinking this the other day. Looking more handsome is pretty good. Yeah. Not many people come out of a of a life changing surgery looking better. You know, it's always it's always like the guy who has like a, a gnarly scar from his neck down to his dick. Oh, like yeah, I needed it or I would have died. <laughs> no one's like, oh man, I ju I just had uh, I just had surgery to remove the tumor from my brain, but at least I look more handsome. You know, that guy has a bald patch and a scar for the rest of his life and he lost his eye. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy. I'm feeling and, I, and I'm just uh, every day I'm just getting better and better in terms of like how I feel like the the brain fog is gone. The my short term memory is like here. I'm not really forgetting shit anymore. Um, I can I'm just naturally waking up at like no alarms. I'm waking up at like 730 in the morning going to bed at like 10.30 at night and just I have like a real normal sleeping pattern. When I was in the first, like in the second month, like after all the pain when I could actually properly sleep through the night, I was sleeping like 10 or 11 hours, which is like paying off your sleep debt. And I think I still am sleeping much longer than I, than I would normally need to, but I think that will slowly change. So, yeah, it's really, man, it's really optimistic because it, it's like the – 
the it's really been four years because I needed this surgery right when COVID started is when I needed it. And then COVID delayed it two years and then it was two years to finish the whole process. So when COVID ended, that's when my surgery should have been f- finished. Uh, but then it went on for two more years. So it's been real tough for me, but I feel great. I feel really, really good. Man, the the, the bags under my eyes are just gone. Yeah. I used to, if you look at videos of me, like even six months ago, horrible, awful bags under my eyes. And also my eyelids are less droopy. They used to be real droopy and almost half shut, which is a sleep apnea st- symptom. Your eyes are less open. Um, so just like all these little changes, I am still swollen a little bit around here, like below my cheekbones and above my upper teeth. There's, there's a lot of swelling here, which you can kind of only see like in person, I think. And then also underneath my chin. So I think the chin is actually going to get a lot sharper because there's all this swelling underneath it. And also what's really cool, I might charge for this after shows. You can feel the metal in my chin. Oh, yeah. Here. Can you see it? <laughs> no. Nah. So here, oh yeah, here to there, that's a piece of metal. Here, that's not. There's bone. There with there will eventually be bone underneath it. But like this is metal, and then I can go up, and it comes in. There's no bone mm. there. And then on the left side, there's a there's a piece of metal, uh, like here, like right on the side. But on the right on the right side, it's it's underneath. So, what's funny is is the right side looks a lot stronger than the left side, which is interesting because it's metal. I don't know. And then I have a bunch of metal like here that looks like, um, I don't know, prongs in my skull. That'll be fun going through the airport. Um, but yeah, I don't have, I don't have much pain anymore. The only pain that I do have is in my masseter muscles, my jaw muscles, because they got stretched into a position that they're not used to. Obviously, uh, they have to literally grow longer. So every now and then, if I pull a facial expression I haven't pulled since the surgery or if I turn my head and smile or frown or sometimes when I yawn, I'm sure it'll happen during a podcast. I just get like a real sharp pain in in the muscles, like a leg cramp that it really hurts but goes away as soon as it happens. And that's kind of the only thing and that, that will slowly fade away as they get used to the new spot that they're in. So that's good. I'm... I. That's kind of all I have to say. I am. I feel fully cu- cured. The 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 surgeon was like, "How do you feel?" And I go, "Man, I feel I feel so much better. I feel cured." And he goes, "Well, we'll have to wait for a sleep study." <laughs> you know, he's such a doctor. I'm like, "No, nah, no, nah, dude, I feel better." Um. So yeah, we have to do a sleep study in like December or January to kind of confirm the results. But the way that I feel, man, like it's. Like the, the way I said to the surgeon, I was like, we were talking, he was like, do you like how you look? And I was like, yeah, I, lo- I love how I look. I, I feel like I was really worried that I would look like a different person, but I just kind of look like a more handsome version of me. My head's a lot squarer. If you look at it, it's gotten a lot shorter because it used to slope down and he actually took a lot of bone out from underneath my nose, mm. from my skull. So everything's kind of moved up. What's really weird is my, the, the, opening of my mouth used to be where my bottom underneath my bottom lip. So for the first month, whenever I would drink from a glass, I would put it here like underneath my bottom lip, which is where my mouth used to be just from muscle memory. And then I'd go, Oh wait, it's actually up here. Cause I was all numb. So all I had to go off was where my, you know, my hand normally goes. So my mouth was here now it's up here, which is really weird, but it kind of shows how sh- much shorter my face has gotten. And I was like, yeah, I, I love it. I, I think I look look good. I think I still look like me, which I, which I was, you know, really worried. I, li- I liked my face before. Um, I didn't want it to change too much. Uh, so I was happy with it. Uh, and, and I said to him, I was like, but dude, honestly, like the way that I feel, if I came out of this surgery looking like a lot uglier, I would still be stoked. Uh, and he's like, oh, well. I'm glad that didn't happen. Um, mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, relax. He, he can't take a compliment. I was like, dude, thank you so much. And he goes, well, we'll see the results. And I was like, I was like, yeah, but like I healed nice. I'm happy with how I look. Like that's all you. And he goes, I, I'm just the carpenter, you know. Uh, there's there's architects and the orthodontist 
you know, did the plans. I just did the cutting. I'm like, would you just, <laughs> just you know? It. Well, if, if that's the case, well, give me a refund. If you, <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm I'm happy. It's uh, it's it's really 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 good. And also, my mood is just better as well. Like I'm just generally. I wouldn't say I'm like uh, I feel happier. I would say that I f- that I feel much more stable and much more regulated and much less sad. Like I don't feel happy. I just feel less sad and like disreg. Like before, things would set me off. I would get angry or grumpy or sad really easily. Um, and now I'm just like a lot more mellow and stable. And uh, and a lot of that is just like sleep. Like that's what your brain does when you're asleep, it puts away memories and things that happen and it, your brain processes shit and recharges. And if you don't do that, you know, try not sleeping for two days. You're a bit of a fucking asshole and you feel like shit. So, uh, it's, yeah, I'm every day I'm noticing new, new things that I'm feeling and, and different ways that I, I'm experiencing the world, but then also realizing how like sick I was. Like it, it's made me go, Oh fuck. I was actually, I knew I was really bad. I was a lot worse than I thought I was, even when I thought I was really bad. And it's also made me go, I was sick for way longer than I thought. I reckon I've been at least had this in, a, at least had a mild, mildly negative version of this since I was 18, at least. <clears throat> maybe even as, as far back as like when I was a teenager. So yeah, if you have any of the symptoms that I've talked about, go to the GP and ask for a sleep study. It's very important, especially if you're a man, especially if you're overweight, male or female, uh, cause this shit will kill you. So I've been, I've been getting back out into the world cause uh, I've been feeling good. I just kind of was like, all right, I'm feeling good, but I don't want to start working until I've had like a couple of weeks of just like doing normal everyday life things like cooking and and you know cleaning and the laundry and things like that leaving the house just to see how I feel because uh if I started working when I started leaving the house I definitely would have had to stop again so I am I am now feeling good but uh now that I've been getting out in the world I'm uh, I'm seeing a lot of things and I'm reminded that uh obviously respecting people is very important yes of course. um but at the same time, uh, there are some people that actually deserve to be disrespected mm-hmm. uh, and they have it coming and, and it's actually uh, a moral good and I encourage that you disrespect them. Uh, and I think that there are lots of different types of people out there. Now, when I first suggested this uh, subject to Keelan, he started going on, on more of a race vibe, but I'm thinking oh more God. just jobs. Uh, there are types of what? There are types of jobs <laughs> That if you do them, you should not only not only should we not respect the job, we should actually disrespect the person while they're doing the job. Yes, yes. So if you see them doing the job, they actually deserve respect, disrespect, um, which is, you know, for like opposite example of this is like uh, a, a nurse or a doctor. You know, if they're doing a job, they're saving lives. Love it. They deserve respect. Um, if you see uh, a ticket inspector on the train, they should actually be uh, disrespected. Yeah. Now, previously, when I saw a ticket inspector on the train, I would uh, I would not respect them, but that's actually different from disrespecting them. Like not giving them respect is like when they ask for your ticket, you don't look them in the eyes, you just go like that, like they're some kind of slave, Mm -hmm. right? That's what I used to do. But now I'll actually disrespect them because I just see them doing things that are actually uh, a a moral curse and a blight upon the land. Uh, And the reason I started doing this is um, one time I was on a train and there were undercover ticket inspectors and they came on, tickets please, tickets please. And I did my thing of like, I'm not looking at you because I only look at people with souls. Mm -hmm. So redheads and ticket inspectors don't get eye contact from me. So I give him my my ticket, and then he scans it, and and uh, and whatever. And then there's there's like a like actually a seventy year old woman, and they walk up to her, and they and she's touched on, uh, and she and she doesn't have her pensioners card, uh, or her concession card, or whatever you have to carry. Uh, she doesn't have, and they find her, and 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 she's very confused. And she's 70 years old and they find her. And I saw that and I thought, I reckon the next time I see a ticket inspector, I'm actually going to disrespect them because that Mm. sucks. Um, And sure enough, 
after my surgery, months go by and I'm back on the train and these ticket inspectors, there's this young girl uh, traveling to PAX and uh, she's on the train and she's a student. You can tell because she has purple hair and a school bag and she had a student card on her, but she didn't have her concession card because she forgot her wallet. So she just had an extra card in her little tart bag and they come up to her and they, and they, and they find her and she starts to cry. Uh, and, and as, as she starts to cry, uh, I go, Hey, great job, man. Really good work. You find a student and made her cry. Love it. Really sarcastically for the entire train to hear. And that, Felt really good. That's great. To just disrespect someone doing a despicable job. It wasn't like some dude who jumped the gates and was trying to fight the woman who worked there, yeah. asking him to touch on politely. It was like this dude that just made a young girl cry who was who was out, probably spent, she goes, I can't afford a fine. And then you know what they do? They fucking lie. She goes, am I going to get fined? And he goes, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to submit your details and what you've told me to the commission and they'll decide if you'll, like, like making it sound like maybe she won't be fined. And I just said to her, no, nah, you're going to get a fine. Yeah. <laughs> and then I went, great job, dude. And he felt shit that day, I hope. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's what it's all about. It's, it's about because there are some jobs that like there are lots of jobs that we need. You need a plumber, all right? Society collapses if we don't have a plumber. If we don't have uh, a guy who picks up rubbish on the side of the road – the world ends. You know, there are lots of jobs that get disrespected that are actually some of the most important jobs on the fucking planet. If the garbage man doesn't come for three weeks, my whole street stinks and people start to die because we get diseases. That's a, an amazing job worthy of respect. Undercover ticket inspector, they should be spat on. Don't spit on them. They will punch you. You know, <laughs> but but you actually inspired me. Yes, uh, because you have a, a recent story that I love so and that I encourage everyone to do. The other day, and this is a new segment, by the way. I was at the Alfred Hospital with Phoebe for a reason, and I've walked out. I parked, I parked, and I and I've, we've walked out, and I'm pretty uh, frustrated, a bit upset, a bit angry, and I see <laughs> how much my parking is going to cost me for two hours, roughly. Which, before you go on, it's fucked that. A hospital charges for tickets. And, and if you can prove that you're there for care or visiting someone that needs care, the hospital should just go, yeah. And in this case, I'd uh, been at the hospital a few times where I just parked up the road, walked down for mm. free. Yeah. But today was literally an emergency. So mm. I had to park. Yeah. Anyway, $43 for two hours of parking. What? I didn't know it was that much. <laughs> yeah. And I've just started going, you fucking cunts. And Phoebe's, Phoebe's there. She's like, all right, calm down. It's not that big of a deal. I'll pay for it, whatever. Yeah. I was like, it's not the point. I pull up to pay at the little uh, ticket box where the boom yeah. gate is and I've pressed the call button and Phoebe's in the passenger seat going, don't, don't <laughs> yell at them. They didn't answer, so I paid the $43. Yeah. I then drive out. And I'm like, oh, so you were going to yell at the person for you, charging you? Yeah, I was going to go, you fucking scumbags! Give this parking to me for free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so, so you had all of this this rage that yes. was really about you. Really, I was really and, angry. And you were like, you know what? I'm going to put this into someone else. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ruin someone else's day. And yeah. She, Phoebe's like, but they're just doing their job. Mm. I was like, but they've picked a bad job. The, hey. The Nazis were just doing their job too, yeah. all right? And and Nazis and ticket inspector, same. <laughs> so anyway, we pull out and immediately as soon as I pull out of the car park, I see this fucking parking inspector writing a fine to someone parked at the emergency drive. Wow, park. that sucks. So see, I that's, a, that's a perfect example of a job that you just – because people are like, oh, they're just doing their jobs. Some jobs you should just refuse to do. You know, like I worked in a in a call center and uh, I got offered the option to work in debt collection and I went, that's actually evil. I don't yes. want to do that. Yes. I don't want to take people's homes. So I pull up to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I roll down my window and Phoebe's like, don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, hey, brother. And he turns around and I go, you have no fucking soul. <laughs> You're a fucking scumbag. You're a piece of shit. <laughs> And I just, I just unloaded on this oh, guy. That's good. 
That's really good. And then I finished it off with the the obvious. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> And then I drove away. I really, I really like, hey brother, you have no soul. <laughs> That's really good. Because go fuck yourself, fuck you. That it, if I hear that, doesn't matter what I'm doing, the other guy's the asshole. If yeah. someone winds down my window, hey brother, you have no soul. Instantly I'm getting introspective about my actions. So and then I turn to Phoebe and she's like, okay, well that is that is pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> I go, I hope. I hope that he thinks about this when he goes to bed tonight. Hundred percent. Thirty years from now, in the shower, he's going to hear, "Hey, brother, you have no soul." As he's writing a fine for someone in the emergency department. <laughs> and then, and then, what's great about it uh, is that it felt so good. After, yeah. As soon as I did that, I mm. felt this relief. And yeah. I, my mood changed. Yeah. I mean, he deserved it. He did. That's what's really. That's what's really good about these things. Is is. Normally, you know, if I if I made someone say say I'm I'm calling a call center and the business is really fucked up, if I unload on the customer service person, I'm I'm I ne- I'm never gonna feel better. I'm gonna I've never done that, but I would feel awful. And I've been on the other end of that, and every single time, pretty much, the person by the end of the call, even if you haven't solved their problem, they go, "I'm sorry, I feel bad about that." But what's good about unloading on a ticket inspector is you actually go, "Oh, I've actually I've done a good deed today." Yes, and that's the that's part of the new the new segment, guys. Uh, jobs that that deserve disrespect. Right, not jobs that we shouldn't respect. Jobs that we should actively, as a verb, participate in disrespecting yeah. to their faces as they do them. Uh, ticket inspectors on the train, uh, ticket inspectors in in hospitals, uh, in other places, ticket inspectors I can respect. Like there's a parking inspector finding someone for parking in front of a driveway or in a loading zone, or absolutely go for it. But the emergency <laughs> department of a hospital, hey brother, you have no soul. You so know, that, that's a job where you do the round. Where say I'm a parking inspector, absolutely, I'll do the rounds of the hospital. Not everyone was following the rules. I'm not. I'm not writing a single ticket. That's what I'm saying. You can have a have a shit job, yeah, but do it poorly. Absolutely, because here's the thing: no one is like, oh, I need to get to work, but there's no there's no. Uh, parking spots at the train station. I'll just drive to the emergency department of a hospital and park there. Mm. No one's doing that. Uh, like all of those people are like, they're not going to the hospital being like, ah, I don't want to buy a ticket. I'll just risk it. Everyone's there is like, oh fuck, my wife is bleeding out. I'll just park here and take her into the emergency department and then I'll stay with her and make sure she's okay. That's why they're parking there and not paying for their fucking ticket. And then they come back and be like, oh, great, my wife's deceased and I have a $400 fine. Fuck. My brother showed me this little hack, love love him to bits, that if you park, there's like, there's a difference between like um, the timed parking and then no standing and then like clearway zones. Really? He showed me at Frankston Hospital that in that emergency <laughs> section, there is, I don't have my license. there is a yeah. place that you can park mm. and you will never get fined. Right. So he used to park, pretty rude to the people who need to actually park there, but he used to park in like the parent section or like the- Of the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. So see, you know when I said no one's actually parking <laughs> there because they can't be bothered getting a parking spot somewhere else. That was actually wrong. Some people are. <laughs> my brother does, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> And 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 he and he'll be judged by God when he gets there. <laughs> so, ticket inspectors, rental agents. Oh, agents! Absolutely, they should they should actually be disrespected. I remember one time uh, when I was when I was uh, at the old place I was renting. I talked about it on the show. Showed up unannounced to do an unannounced inspection. Yeah, uh, which I at the time did not know was illegal. Uh, if I was to have my time again, I would actually go. Yep, just give me 15 minutes to clean up. I would wait 20 minutes, go back to the door and go, actually, this is illegal. Make an appointment and come back. <laughs> just waste her time and make her go home. Debt collectors. Yep, debt collectors. Um, scam callers. Yep, absolutely. Just send an email to podcast at loosebeers.com or, or DM me, send, it, send a message to the show, leave a comment. Uh what jobs deserve active disrespect? I would love to hear your ideas. And also, have you ever disrespected someone doing a job uh, that deserved it or didn't deserve it? That would be funny too. Mm. <laughs> I have a new hobby, mm. uh, and and with with and it's it's good news, but it's bad news mm. because uh, it's uh, it's it's good because it's something that that everyone should get into. 
and it's less of a hobby, more of just like a skill that everyone should have. Okay. I'm getting really into cooking. Oh, yeah, you said this the other day. Yeah. Yeah. And this is good because everyone needs to know how to cook if you're a fucking human. Mm-hmm. It's bad because this I think this means the, the end, the permanent end of cooking without instructions. <laughs> because if I know how to cook things. Yeah, there's no point. Yeah, I'll go, I know how to do that. Yeah. Oh, a steak. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> Instead of causing a house fire. Yeah. I do. I did. I, we did kind of already talk about that series, like just not working because I had kind of done every type of food. So it doesn't really work. The only way I could see it coming back is if I did it with a guest yeah. and, and they didn't really know what was going on. And that way I could kind of facilitate what's going on and they could do, make most of the bad decisions. But I've been getting into cooking. I've been, uh, I was like, you know why? Because I haven't been able to eat food. I've been obsessing over it. Yeah. And, and eating food has always been really difficult for me. I've never liked food. I've talked about this all, so much on the podcast. I've never liked eating and, I've, and I would always eat for a really long time. Um, it's because my mouth was too small. Like even shit like that, my mouth was too small and I also couldn't breathe properly when I was eating because my nose didn't work and my mouth was too small. So eating would take a really long time and it would be really difficult. So I would just I go, uh, I just won't. Mm. <laughs> uh, and so like I've, I've, I, uh, now my mouth, the inside of it is huge. Uh, and when I, and I've been so fucking hungry and I'm so sick of blended shit that I'm like, man, as soon as I can like bite into something, I want to eat like actual meals and food that is good for me. That's actually a meal. So I went to a bookstore, giant bookstore in the city, Demix. And I was looking for a cookbook. I was like, I, I just gonna, I'm just going to pick a cuisine and I'm going to learn that. Uh, and I decided on Italian because I looked at – I love Japanese food, but I was like, I'm, if I have to buy fish all the time, it's going to go off all the time and I'm going to kill myself. Yeah. I'm going to give myself poisoning. It'll be tragic. It, it won't be good. Plus, it looks more difficult. Um, so I settled on Italian because that's like – all the ingredients are basically like tomatoes – and beef and you know some fish sometimes and then like pork yeah. i'm like that's easy i can go to the supermarket and get all of those things if i'm desperate or i can go to a nice butcher and a nice grocer uh so then i'm like all right i'm in the italian section and every fucking cookbook is like my travels through italy with photos of the chef hey man if you're a chef get the fuck out of your own cookbook all right give me a recipe i don't want a picture of the food i want to know how to make it and I want to know best practices. I don't give a fuck about your trip to Italy that I'll never be able to afford. Okay, look, I went to I went to Bologna and I found a I found a destitute poor family and I stole their hundred year old recipe. Didn't pay them for it. Now it's in a book next to my big fat alcohol swollen head. Fuck off. All right. I don't, so I'm looking at all these books and they're pissing me off and they're all a hundred dollars, making me angry. So I just go, I just googled like one of the best cookbooks and I settled on this one cookbook that was written by an Italian nonna who was born in 1920 and is now dead. I'm like, that's exactly what I want. No pictures, 700 pages of text <laughs> of just fucking recipes. And you open the book and she's like, uh, so uh, a lot of people cook pasta like this, but if, if you do that, uh, you're wrong. Uh, and you have to do it like this, otherwise you're an idiot. Also, there's no such thing as an Italian restaurant because Italian cooking happens at home, <laughs> which is what you want. I watched an interview with her and uh, and she didn't speak any English. I'm like, that's great. That's exactly what I want. And and they go, so how did you come about writing the cookbook? Because it was so long ago. And she's like, uh, a guy came over to my house and uh, had dinner and turns out he was a journalist. And he was like, have you ever thought of... Uh, uh, Michella Hazone is her name. She goes, uh, uh, he, he said, uh, have you ever thought about writing a cookbook? She's like, no, I can't speak English. How could I write a cookbook? And he goes, oh, um, well, why don't you uh, just write it down? She goes, I don't want to write a cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's like, I'll give you money. She's like, I don't give a fuck. And he goes, all right, I'll get an Italian guy over to the house. You just tell him what you're doing and he'll write it down in Italian and then we'll translate it to English. She's like, whatever. And then, and then that's the cookbook. And dude, I made, I made, cause I can eat soft pasta. I made bolognese and I fucking, I, I, I blew Jasmine's brain out the back of her head with the, it's so good. 
I had it for breakfast this morning. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. It took me six hours to, to cook it. What? I went to I went out to a in Frankston, there's a really nice butcher next to a really nice fresh grocer. I went there thinking, oh man, I'm gonna have to buy all this fresh stuff. It's gonna be so fucking expensive. It was like 30 bucks. Yeah, that's where we go. Because it's so much cheaper than the rules. Cheaper than the fucking supermarket that has like less worse quality stuff. No service because it's done by robots who are just filming you in case you steal something, which, by the way, you should. Uh, and 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 it's and it's like double the price. I was putting shit in my cart, going, "This is going to be fucking. I can't afford this. I'm going to have to give on my uh, my dream of cooking." And then the woman like was scanning items for ten minutes, and she goes, "That'll be thirty dollars." I'll go, "What?" And and then and then I was like checking my pockets for out of habit in case I stole something, which I would never do from a small business. Um, but from Coles and Woolworths, it's, it's actually your moral duty to steal from them. It's it's actually an, an inherent moral good. It, you should do it. Um, and it it's like the 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 best thing I've ever cooked. It's incredible. Um, highly recommend learning how to cook. Do you know how to cook anything? Yeah, I can I can cook some stuff. I don't like cooking. Yeah. Yeah. Have I, you ever, have you ever like looked at a recipe and gone, I'm going to try and make this? Actually, the other day, Phoebe's mum was telling me about, and this fits me very well, Coca Cola chicken. Yeah. Have you ever heard of that? I have heard of it, I think. And I thought she was lying. So I think it would be nice. I looked it up. It, it seems like a lot of fun to cook. Yeah. So I'm going to try that. Well, uh, last night uh, or the night before, um, I had cooked like the only dessert that I thought I would maybe be able to eat. And I kind of couldn't really. So Jazz had most of it. Uh, it was just, it was basically just like fried apple, right? In this, I don't know, it was really amazing. Um, but it was uh, three apples uh, cut up and fried. And then I, it said it serves six to eight. But Apple, right, it gets really s small when you cook it. So it became really small. So I kind of made this dessert that serves eight fucking people, uh, and which is really like you have two pieces each yeah. is kind of the deal. And then I give it to Jazz. She doesn't know it serves eight people. And I go, what do you think of this? Turns out I can't eat it. She's really hungry. <laughs> and, and she just unwittingly just consumes three deep fried apples and then feels really sick because <laughs> she, she ate it all because I cooked it and then I couldn't eat it. And so she felt bad for me. Didn't want to be rude. Eats fucking three full <laughs> deep fried apples. She goes, I feel really sick. Um, but it was good. Uh, so yeah, I've, I, I've just been like, Oh man, I want to learn how to cook uh, things. And it's, it's man, it's good. Spending six hours fucking cooking something and then having a week's worth of food in the fridge is so much better than like just getting a packet of fucking mince and jar sauce yeah. from Coles yeah. and then splitting that up into, into, into a few meals. And then it's like, oh, what will I season this with? Cheese? <laughs> it's, it's not good. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into I'm now a chef. For, forewarned. Next time you come over for the, for the podcast, I'll I'll make something. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Should do the grilly thing. Oh yeah. Speaking of food, so uh, Greeley was in Melbourne, uh, and and he came over, and he's like, "Hey man, do you want to come?" Over? And Greeley Greeley loves to talk, so I was like, "Yes, but I I cannot speak." <laughs> and he's like, "Don't worry, man. I'll do all the talking." <laughs> and, and 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 that's when I realized, like, oh, that's actually. Greeley's preferred type of friendship is I'm <laughs> is, is is sitting across the room from a friend whose mouth is is uh, is held shut with it with an external device and then just talking and then they nod mm. and it was great I loved it because I hadn't fucking left the house or seen anyone for ages I was just lucid enough to kind of have company and he came over it was really good to see him and and, and hang out and everything because he's been living in Darwin. Um, but then uh, he ended up staying at your house. Yeah, I was um, in Canberra. So he, he came over to my house and he stayed the night at your place. Um, and and I, I, I've had in my house, because uh, my son, my girlfriend's little brother who, who we've been looking after, he got into a phase where he loved up and go. And then he went off it. 
which I think is, I don't know, have you ever known anyone to consistently like Up and Go? Never. It's something where you're like, ah, oh, I would love Up and Go for the next two mornings in a row. Now it's gross. We had this fucking slab of Up and Go in our house for like eight months because he went off it and then and then we didn't like it. And I couldn't, I can't drink through straws yet because I'm not allowed to suck. Sorry, fellas. <laughs> so I've been trying to get rid of this fucking up and go for so long. So first visitor to come over, I'm like, bang, this cunt is leaving with my slab. That's the only reason I had Greeley over to my house. I didn't want to see him. I wanted to stop seeing my up and go slab in the fucking pantry. All right. I've got to make room for carrots and onions and, and tin tomatoes from Italy. That's another thing from, thing from the cookbook. She spent six paragraphs about why you should only ever buy tomatoes from Italy because <laughs> no one else knows how to grow tomatoes and no other country respects tomatoes like they should be. <laughs> and they have to be imported tinned from, from Italy. Yep. So that's why I was like, great, my, sh my shopping is going to be so fucking expensive. $2. I don't know what they're paying those pickers in Italy, but it's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> so he comes over to my house and, and as he's leaving... The first thing I say to him, he's been over there for eight hours talking to me. The first thing I say to him is, turn it over and go. <laughs> and he's like, oh, awesome. Up yeah. and go. Like, I feel like that's everyone's reaction to like, if no one wants up and go in their house, but when they go over to someone else's house and they have up and go, fuck yeah, I'll have one. I gave him a slab and he was stoked. And then I shut the door and locked it and he was stuck with the reality of a slab of up and go. Way too much up and go for one man, doesn't matter. I got it out of my house, next man's problem. Then Grilly goes to your house. Yes, and I have. I was staying in Canberra, Phoebe and I were staying in Canberra and I have a ring camera. So he rocks up to my house at like almost midnight mm. and I just watch him through the camera kind of unlock the door and everything. And I notice he's got a slab of up and go. <laughs> and then he's there for like three or four days and I don't check it every time he was walking in and out, but every so often I would just check yeah. to see what's going on. And every so often he'd be walking out of the house with an up and go in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And I'm just thinking, oh, he must love up and go. Yeah. I get home. Because that is you know, that is strange for like a guy to, to, to be like, hey, can I house sit for a few days? And they rock up with a slab and you're like, oh, fuck, he's having a party. <laughs> Hang on. Is that up and go? And this man's planning a, a bunch of productive mornings in a row. <laughs> I kind of pointed it out to Phoebe. I was like, he's got a slab of up and go. <laughs> I didn't know he liked up and go. And, and <laughs> There's also no supermarkets in the area. Where did he get it from? Yeah. And we were like, oh, he must have got an Uber. To go get up and go. <laughs> anyway, I get back a week later, I open the fridge and there's uh, like three quarters of a slab left of up and go. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> I was like, I guess this is a gift. Okay. And Whitey had also that, Uncle Whitey had also that week ordered me eight bottles of pineapple juice. <laughs> so our fridge. <laughs> when, why is that? And our fridge is just <laughs> full of drinks that we're not going to consume. So no one the, wants. Over the next few days, Phoebe and I are just kind of drinking up and go, but it's vanilla protein flavour, so it's not amazing. Yeah. We end up staying at Rosie's house for yeah. like a week because um, Rosie was in New Zealand. Yeah. And we we brought the up and go <laughs> with us. <laughs> it's at Rosie's house? It's at Rosie's house. <laughs> and Phoebe, by the end of this week, was like, in love with up and go with this wow. flavor. She's weird because I, I think I couldn't ever have up and go more than two days in a row before I'm like, I hate this. And so we get down to six up and goes that are left. Anyway, Phoebe has to go home for whatever reason. She calls me and she goes, do not forget the up and go. They're in the <laughs> fridge. When you pack up, make sure you grab the up and go. Yeah. I ended up leaving in a rush. I didn't end up going back to Rosie's place. Then I realized Rosie texted me. She's like, I'm home. Thanks for looking after the place. I was like, oh my God, the only thing left in her house yeah. in her entire apartment is six up and goes. So it just passed from you well, that's, from, that's great. from your son to you to yeah. Greeley to me to Rosie. That's good. I, I honestly I'm excited to hear from Rosie where the up and go makes it next because <laughs> there's there's one thing I know about Rosie for sure. She's not an up and go fan. <laughs> yeah. I don't think if she ever walked in into into the office with an up and go, I'd be like, go home, you're feeling sick. <laughs> <laughs> Have a mental health day. You don't, this is so out of character for you. I can text her and ask her what she's done with the up and go. I reckon her boyfriend's had it. That's like, 
that's for sure his 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 mood. But I would I would love to know what's happened to the up and go. Yeah, that's I'll give great. You an update next week. Yeah, an update. See, then and that's what Spearhead Sun is all is all about. Is like, oh, I wonder what happened to the giant slab of up and go. You know, this might be a good opportunity. At the bottom of this episode on Spotify, you can answer a question. We'll put up the question, what do you think Rosie's done with the up and go? That's great. And you can you as the audience can answer that question. Yeah, and we'll we'll read out the suggestions <laughs> and uh and and whoever whoever is closest has to go to the supermarket the and and, <laughs> and steal a slab of up and go from Coles because it's your moral duty. Um all right, what else has been happening? Dude, my dad did the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I haven't seen, I haven't seen any, I don't think I've seen anyone do this, uh, since I was 10 and, and the last person to do it was probably my dad. Okay. Uh, this is going to, this is going to, this is going to, anyone who's like under 60 is going to lose their mind right now. Okay. So my dad, my grandfather, he lives in, in Buxton on a farm, right? So really far way out. My dad lives about halfway there from my place. So uh, I was feeling well enough to leave the house. We wanted to go see my grandfather. Uh, and my dad was like, let's go up. I'll drive all the way out to Frankston to come get you. And then we'll go from Frankston all the way to Buxton. Mm -hmm. Right. And so this is like my first outing. And my dad drives all the way from his house, about 40 minutes, all the way to Frankston on new roads that they've they've just built mm -hmm. uh, to my house, picks me up, and then from a place that he's never left from before to go to his grandfather's house on new roads that were just built, he drove all the way there. This man didn't look at a map. <laughs> he didn't look at his phone. <laughs> there was no GPS. He's never driven on these roads before. He's never gone from my house to his grandfather's house ever before in his life. And he got there, didn't make a single wrong turn even once. That's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Have you? You couldn't do that shit. Yes, I could. No, you couldn't. Because you have a mental, when you drive, you have a mental, a mental map of where suburbs are. There's, I've never in my life seen someone make a fucking three hour trip. If, no maps. If your dad knows how to get from his place to Buxton, yeah. you'd know how to get from your house to your dad's house to Buxton. He just kind of put the pieces together from here to there. Look, man, I don't have my license. I think that's, I think that's the No, thing. but there's no fucking way. There's no, you could, there's, you could not do that. I couldn't, but I, I can understand that I can understand how this is. The, I think this is exclusively a skill for the over 50s. Yeah, yeah. There's sure. no fucking way that anyone under, like 40 and under, could ever navigate yeah. from a place they've never been to a place they've never been. Okay, all right. Well, you, when you put it that way, yeah. That is impressive. You could definitely do it for sure if you've, if you've done it a few times with a, with a map or whatever from a normal place where you leave. But. This man did it on new roads that have just been built. Yeah, okay. That is impressive. Good on him. Yeah, good on him. I'm almost 30. I don't have my license. That's <laughs> one thing I'm, I'm going to do. You know, at some, at, some, at some point two years ago, the doctor was like, uh, yeah, don't. Don't drive. Don't drive. <laughs> like, that's how bad it was. He, was, he goes, uh, are you driving? And I was like, I don't have my license. And he goes, oh, good. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> you, do, you can't drive. I was like, oh, cool. I love thinking about when you did your comedy special, mm. I was on my learners. Mm. When I met you, mm -hmm. I was really like new on my P plates. Mm -hmm. I've now been off. I've been now on my full license for two years. Mm. So you could teach me how to drive. Yeah. You know what else is really great uh, to think about? I met my girlfriend when uh, we were both 18. Yep. Uh, so that was... Uh, 11 years ago. So yeah, 10 or 11 years ago. So that would mean that my son was five <laughs> and now he's 16 and he can start learning how to drive. <laughs> and my learner's permit expired. Hopefully that would be cool to see your son get his license before you. I might have to walk in front of his car <laughs> if that if that happens. I can't let that happen. If he's driving around before me, 
it's it's I have to I just have, you know what I have to do I have to move to a country where it's impractical to have a car like New York or Syria. <laughs> what do you think of this? If you're an L plater and you're on your driver's test to get your actual license, mm-hmm. if someone honks you, mm-hmm. it's an automatic disqualification. You fail your test. Okay. This is good. The other day. Yeah. I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> you're, a you're like, no, 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 no. I think this is actually really valid. Yeah. I don't know if the, the L plater was on their test, mm-hmm. but they took a really long time to turn at like an intersection. That was okay. I gave yeah. them that pass. Mm-hmm. And then <clears throat> they're in the right lane. I'm in the left lane. Yeah. I'm trying to overtake them. Yeah. It's, it's like a 60. So I'm allowed to overtake from the left lane. And they kept veering into my lane. Mm. So I went up to them and I kind of went, Hong Hong. Yeah. And then I kept driving. And Just then they were like, of, great, that's that's a hundred dollars in six months in the queue. Well that's waiting for my That's kind of what I thought. I was like, oh fuck, I hope that wasn't their test. But also they were more in my lane than they were in their lane and mm. they didn't have their indicator on. Well that's fair. How about this? And my yeah, was that wrong with me? Uh probably. <laughs> <laughs> but also maybe you saved both of your lives. Mm. Um how about this? You just inspired me. New business plan, all right? I know I said I was coming back to do comedy. Fuck this and fuck you, all right? This show sucks. This is the new business plan for you and me. We start up um, a, a driver's learning school, okay. right, where we do the tests, okay? I'll do the admin. You do the test. I can't drive. Um, what we do is we start it up next to the the biggest driving school in the area, and we pay a bunch of other people to every time a student leaves that place to do their test, someone follows them in a car and just honks them at the first opportunity to make it even like slightly plausible that the learner's fucked up. Pretty soon they'll start getting reviews like these people just keep fucking failing me for no reason. I don't understand it. I've done three tests there. I failed every time uh, and, and they're just too harsh. We'll get all the good reviews. Because and, and, and also, cherry on top, we pass anyone no matter what. You hit a dog, flying colours, you've passed. Well done. That's a great idea. I like that. That's good. So challenge to the listener, if you see an L plater, just beat them. them. Yeah, they deserve it. Um, but if it's me, let it slide. And then raise your hands like you're angry at them. Ah, what are, what you, are you doing? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today, the Logan Paul fight. Is happening. Yes. Uh, when when you're listening to this, unless you're a Patreon supporter, you get it early. The Logan Paul fight's happening. Dylan Dennis, Logan Paul. Um, I think the interesting shit's already happened. The the stuff on Twitter. That's that's way more. That's way more interesting. What do you think about? Um, if you don't if, recap, Dylan Dennis is a, a, a former UFC fighter um, who is uh, going to box Logan Paul. So Logan Paul's just picked someone who he thinks he can just trash because Logan desperately needs a win or this boxing shit is just over for him in terms of money. Um, so he's picked Dylan Dennis and Dylan, to hype up the fight, has uh, been like, okay, so... Because there's a few different things that you can do when when you're about to fight someone, right? You can... You can take digs at them. You can start up a beef. You could maybe ambush them at a training camp and get into a big push fight and have 30 security guards around both of you so you don't actually touch each other. These are all great ways to promo a fight. Or Dylan Dennis has gone, why don't I just uh, harass and stalk his girlfriend <laughs> mm. <laughs> to, a, to a criminal extent? And look, at first it's like, oh, yeah, I, I, that's like, that's it's not – Good, but I understand it's attention grabbing. So that's, you know, cool, whatever. Uh, he's making fun of Logan Paul's girlfriend. Now the guy's like going, oh, I have uh, I have illegally obtained naked pictures of this girl, uh, implying basically that if I posted them, I would go to jail, but they're in my phone and is tweeting about her nonstop, photoshopping pictures of her, posting photos that, that other people obtained by hacking her Snapchat like all of this stuff is like uh, borderline to almost certainly illegal, uh, and and now she's suing him for it, and 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 she will win that, mm. um, which I think is that that's funny. Is like uh, is is beefing so hard with your opponent that you actually forfeit all the prize money if you win, <laughs> yeah. and uh, and and getting she got a restraining order against him, which is which is great. Him going, oh, I don't understand why she would get a restraining order, and it's like oh, I do. Yeah, yeah. You you posted naked photos of her 
uh, that were obtained uh, illegally by hackers and then stalked her and harassed her and, you know, called her a whore, uh, a, a woman you've never met uh, endlessly every single day for months and months and months. Uh, and she's not the person you're fighting. Mm. Maybe I would give it a slide, uh, give it give it a pass if uh, if you were if you were doing it to Logan and you were actually fighting, minus the illegally obtained photos, maybe. But like you don't know this bitch. It's weird behavior. All these people are going, oh, he's promoting the fight. It's like okay, talk about the guy you're fighting. Yeah. Instead of like a woman. <laughs> that's what that's what's so funny about this shit is like oh yeah, but it's okay because she's had a lot of boyfriends. So she's a whore. <laughs> is is the argument? Yeah, but like she's famous and 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 also I don't like women. So I think it's actually really cool that he's uh, that he's that he's talking about posting naked photos of her that he shouldn't have. And he posted a video, pre- like claiming to be claiming to be her of like a a blowjob porn video that clearly wasn't her, mm. but he made it out to be Nina. Yeah, and that's like uh, that's what defamation is. Like if you if you go, oh, here's here's a video of someone that it's definitely not doing an act that would damage their reputation and cost them work. Like she's a model. If she's out there sucking dick on camera, she's not going to get those big jobs for like mainstream brands. That's defamation, and she could prove damages if enough people believed that it was actually her. That's an easy win in court. Like he's a fucking idiot um, for posting that shit. Um, so yeah, I, I hope uh, I hope Logan uh, trashes him, uh, but I really f- I really feel like Logan's gonna lose. I ha- actually have a feeling, and you're coming over to watch the fight at my house. Mm. Uh, I have a feeling that someone will pull out last second. One one yeah. of the two of them. Logan has a broken hand apparently. Well, that's the thing. Both of them are already kind of setting the scene for exactly that to happen, where both of them have given like three or four reasons why they will pull out and why the other person will pull out. So I think both of them are like, it's almost like a game of chicken. Both of them want to pull out, but both of them know that both of them want to pull out. So they're both waiting for the other guy to go, now nah, fuck it, so that they can go, he pulled out, I wanted to fight. I think that's what they're waiting for. Um, but I'm not going to get the pay-per-view until... The fight is 10 a.m. our time on Sunday. Great idea. I'm not going to buy the pay-per-view until 9.50 a.m. Great idea. I'm not going to buy the pay-per-view. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to come over. That's okay. How about this? I'll bring a bolognese. <laughs> and, and you know what? It's going to fucking slap. Okay, you can do that. That's I'll fine. spend six hours on Saturday making a bolognese. <laughs> and it's going gonna, it's gonna, to it's gonna blow the dick out of your fucking head. Yeah, okay. All right. That sounds good. Great. Deal. Can, I just, can I just go away? Uh, how, about I, how about this? I'll end the, the episode. Thank you so much for all your kind words and everything. I hope you enjoy the new chin. Uh, I actually am surprised that we've done an hour here. Yeah. Uh, I feel good. I feel um, a little bit fatigued in my face, um, but I feel good, man. Uh, it's actually a surprise to me. I uh, Yeah, I feel so good. Uh, so thank you uh, for everyone's uh, patience and understanding, uh, and especially to the supporters on Patreon, who are the my literally my only income source at the moment. So thank you very much. I'll talk to you guys next Sunday. I'm back. Uh, my chin is here, and it's over for you. Um, if your girlfriend's on the way, just send me a little note of like what she likes to eat, things she likes to do, um, you know, like what size clothes she is. Does she have any allergies? Uh, just likes and dislikes. Like if your grandmother has prescription medicine and she needs to take it on a schedule, just shoot through the schedule while she's on her way. I'll take good care of them all. Thank you. Have a shit one. Bye.